Good day and welcome to today's spring webinar series. Today we're going to focus on automated solutions for RNA sequencing libraries. We really appreciate your attendance over the past four weeks of our program. As you can see on this slide, today's session, Automated Nanoscale Solution for RNA-Seq Libraries, is the last of a series of webinars. Recordings of these webinars will soon be available on our website. But you can see on this timetable that we've covered off on a lot of different applications of how microfluidics can be used. We started off a few weeks ago with enabling mega insights to microfluidics. That program enabled you to understand what microfluidics were all about and how they work. We then went into details on how microfluidics can be used for the detection and characterization of viral pathogens. This was a very timely session because of the situation that we find ourselves in with COVID-19. Then my colleague Luke Stewart went through the details of the importance of sample tracking and quality assessment using microfluidics to molecularly fingerprint biobanked samples. And today, our last session on automated nanoscale solutions for RNA-seq libraries. The agenda for today's session is to introduce to you our RNA-seq preparation product, the Advana RNA-seq NGS Library Prep Kit. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through a system overview, a workflow overview, and a case study of how our technology has been used to prepare libraries for RNA sequencing in the field of transcriptome analysis for hypoxic intestinal stem cells. We hope that you find today's session useful. So let's start with introducing our Advana RNA-Seq NGS Library Prep Kit. In previous sessions, you've learned all about the Juno system. This is shown on the left-hand side of the slide. The Juno system is our platform that loads via automation all of our microfluidic devices. In the case of the Advana RNA-Seq NGS Library Prep Kit, the Juno system serves as a, a robotic platform that enables you to process samples from end to end, preparing libraries for next generation sequencing. Being an automated platform, the system only requires 30 minutes of hands-on time. The rest of the procedures that you'll see in this presentation are taken care of by the Juno system. The rest of the procedures being things like the loading of the samples, the fragmentation of the samples, followed by the chemistry applications of the samples. That includes the reverse transcription, the barcoding and amplification step, as well as the harvesting, i.e. the collection of the samples off of our microfluidic devices. The reason that the Juno does all those things is to provide you with a tool that enables you to walk away during a normally timely process. The other aspect that we're going to talk about in today's webinar is the 48.atlas IFC. This is one of our microfluidic devices that uses the multi-step reaction chemistry that we mentioned in session one, where different components of enzymes and reagents can be applied to samples at appropriate times so that you can go from end to end on the Juno system. The 48.atlas IFC, as you may imagine, is able to process 48 samples. Once you pipette the samples and the reagents onto the IFC, the Juno system takes care of the, the rest. And the Juno platform enables an instrument controlled nanoscale reactions to minimize the tedious hands-on steps of doing this on a 96 well plate. With this workflow, we also provide the Advana RNA-Seq NGS library prep kit. All of the enzymes, all of the beads, all of the reagents come from fluidine. This kit is a hypothesis-free polyadenylated capture kit that enables you to generate barcoded NGS-ready libraries for total, RM, total mRNA analysis. And it supports the analysis for eukaryotic transcriptomes. Taken together, the 48.atlas IFC and the reagents shown on the right-hand side of the slide 
form the Advana RNA Seq NGS Library Prep Kit. So, what are the benefits of this application in terms of the microfluidic device, the kits, and the journal? The benefits, firstly, would be walkaway automation. Normally, when you perform these types of library preps on a 96 well plate, or even with liquid handling robots, you generally have to babysit or watch each of the steps live. That means that it's impossible to deploy the technical staff performing those works to any other tasks in the lab. The Juno system and the IFC enable the walk away in processing these samples for next generation sequencing. So we have a streamlined, simple workflow with easy to install and operate Juno scripts to eliminate the tedious manual steps, including the solid phase capture of the polyadenylated RNA. The second benefit of the Juno system is really the high efficiency. You can maximize lab resources by minimizing hands-on time. In the introduction of this session, I mentioned preparing the IFC, the 48.atlas IFC, only requires uh, 30 minutes hands-on time. All of the reagent consumption is also very small. We're talking again about nanoliter reaction volumes. These nanoliter reaction volumes enable uh, very small volumes between six and 135 nanoliter reaction volumes. And lastly, we have robust chemistry. All of the chemistry that takes place on the 48.atlas IFC and the Advana RNA Seq NGS Library Prep Kit takes place using our multi step reaction chemistry. From session one, you may remember that this multi-step reaction chemistry means that we have independent control valves on that IFC, which are actively mixed. This means that when we perform the reverse transcription using random primers and template switching, it's a highly efficient reaction. And as we mentioned, this enables you to process up to 48 samples from a variety of organisms. So we've mentioned a little bit about the workflow. Let's look at this in some more detail. The Juno system does indeed enable an automated cost-effective approach to RNA sequencing. You can see the various steps that take place and the various steps that take place on the IFC. Starting from the left-hand side, you can see that we have the integrated fluidic circuit where we load the RNA, the reagents, the oligo DT and the beads onto the chip. That takes between 30 and 60 minutes, depending on experience. Once that's complete, the system is totally automated. The IFC gets loaded onto our Juno platform. That Juno platform enables the automation of the 48.atlas IFC and prepares the chemistry. That takes around nine hours to happen. But key, key message here really is that once it goes on the Juno system, you can walk away. And another important factor is that you can program the Juno platform to remind it of when to harvest the product. In other words, if you put this on during the daytime, meaning that it may come off at before 11 p.m. in the evening, you can actually tell it to hold those reactions inside the IFC until the following morning. So that programmable harvest step is really important. Once that's complete, you then remove the IFC from the Juno platform, and you're able to then pull your libraries into a single tube. That takes around 10 minutes, and then it follows the regular Illumina platform uh, protocols, i.e. cleanup, adapter PCR, and QC. And that takes around three hours. As mentioned, the new 48 Atlas IFC architecture automates multiple steps that would be previously performed manually. These steps include performing the polyadenylation, performing the reverse transcription, performing the barcoding, and performing the amplification. All those steps are now automated. That automation is not possible on liquid handling robots or on 96 well plates. To give you some insight into what we've just mentioned about the different steps of the reaction, 
I mentioned a few times about this multi-step reaction chemistry. With the multi-step reaction chemistry, you can see in the schematic that we are basically automating four key steps in the workflow. Each of these steps have valves in between them. These valves with the multi-step reaction chemistry enable the automation of all of these important steps. So on the schematic shown on the slide, what you can see is the first step is of course loading your sample. Once that sample is loaded, we then perform the bead column formation and the polyadenylated RNA capture, washing and elution. Once that's complete at five nanoliter reaction volume, the second valve is opened up where we perform the fragmentation and the polyadenylation RNA. That takes place at 55 nanoliter reaction volume. That's then followed by a reverse transcription and template switch, which takes 70 nanoliter reaction volume. And once that's complete, we then perform the sample barcode PCR at 360 nanoliters. A key thing not shown on this slide is that though these valves are independently controlled, once one step is complete, the subsequent steps take place across all reaction chambers. What I mean by that is that when we perform the sample barcode PCR, that sample barcode PCR takes place across step three, step two, and step one. The reason that, that I call that to your attention is that though we're working with very small volumes, the fact that we're performing in subsequent reactions across the previous chambers means that nothing is left behind. And that's why, even although we're working at very small volumes, the efficiencies of the reaction are maintained at very high levels. Once all of that's complete on IFC, the product is then pulled into a single tube after harvesting. It then goes and follows the regular Illumina next generation sequencing platform workflow, which includes purification, PCR, and normalization. The workflow that we're presenting today is a highly efficient workflow, efficient in terms of chemistry, efficient in terms of time, and efficient in terms of labor. Let's take a look at comparing the Advana RNA-Seq library prep kit workflow shown on the left-hand side to the TrueSeq standard mRNA-Seq library prep workflow shown on the right-hand side. The purpose of this illustration is to show you the total hands-on time. On the left-hand side with the Advana RNA-Seq library prep kit, you can see that preparing the samples and reagents requires just one hour hands-on time. Once that hands-on time is complete, the IFC then goes into our Juno system. And so when we describe a fully automated Juno script, that is when the IFC is on the platform. That has zero hands-on time. At this point, the technicians, the scientists, the clinical staff running this can walk away because the Juno itself is going to perform its workflow for nine hours. Once that's complete, the harvest takes place, the bead cleanup takes place, amplification, and it goes onto the Illumina platform. That requires just one hour hands-on time. It means that when you're working with the fluidine and the microfluidics using the Advana RNA-Seq library prep kit, hands-on time in total is two hours. The workflow time is 12 hours and 30 minutes. If you compare that to the product on the right-hand side of the slide, the TrueSeq standard mRNA library prep kit, you can see that it requires at the upset four hours hands-on time and downstream requires two hours 45 minutes hands-on time. It means when we compare hands-on time of the TrueSeq application, it's six hours and 45 minutes versus two hours. And the graph in the center really explains it best. The teal color of Advana shows the two hours hands-on time, whereas the teal bar on the TrueSeq shows the close to seven hours hands-on time. So what kind of throughput can we provide you with this microfluidic offering? Let's take an example of a five working day week. Any five working day week, the platform has the ability to process 192 samples. 
And we do this via a so-called staggered workflow. So what you can see in the cartoon are different days, days one through to day five. And on the left-hand side, you can see different stages of each of those days, morning, afternoon, and overnight. If we take day one, the afternoon of day one, the user can prepare the IFC with 48 samples. Once that's complete, they then run the Juno overnight for nine hours. And the following morning, using the programmable harvest, they can collect the amplified material from the IFC. And that's the purple workflow. So that's IFC one. We then go into the pink workflow on day two in the afternoon, where we prepare the second chip, the same workflow. Day three in gray, same workflow again. And day four in a lighter gray color, the same workflow again. And so in one week, you can process these four IFCs, getting you to 192 samples in five working days. We also mentioned the cost savings, and this slide demonstrates the total cost savings of using the Advana RNA Seq. NGS library prep kit. You can see the costing of a project working with 2,500 samples, 5,000 samples, 7,500 samples, and 10,000 samples. And you can see in purple the Advana product versus in grey the TrueSeq product. You can see the savings, the dramatic savings that take place when working with 5,000 samples. If you're working with 5,000 samples using the Advana RNA-seq product, you are saving $185,000. If you've got a larger throughput study, around 10,000 samples, you are saving $370,000 in that project. These are dramatic cost savings, dramatic cost savings enabled by microfluidics and the 48.atlas IFC and the Advana RNA-seq NGS library prep kit. As we mentioned earlier in the presentation, the 48.atlas IFC enables walkaway automation for many workflow steps with minimum hands-on time. This slide is showing you on the left-hand side the steps that take place on the IFC, i.e. capturing and performing the polyadenylation of the RNA using solid phase beads. That then gets eluded into another chamber of the IFC where we then perform the reverse transcription and template switching. We then, on that same IFC, perform the sample barcoding PCR. All of this chemistry is automated on the IFC. Once that's complete, off IFC, we perform the harvesting, the pulling, the amplification, and processing on the Illumina next generation sequencing system. Our product specifications for the Advana RNA Seq NGS Library Prep Kit are shown in the table. As mentioned, this application enables full length stranded RNA libraries from random primed polyadenylated RNA. The sample input requirement is total RNA isolated from tissues and cell lines. Best performance is obtained with a RIN score, RNA integrity number, of greater than seven. However, on our website, you can see that we have posters showing the types of data that you get with RIN scores less than seven. The input is best optimum at 10 to 100 nanograms of total RNA. But again, on our website, you can see the impacts of using less than 10 nanograms. The capital equipment requirement is a Juno instrument. The Juno instrument requires to have something called the TX interface plate. That's the interface plate that is required to run the 48.atlas IFC. Hands-on time, as we mentioned, is around two and a half hours, with total turnaround time of 13 hours from extracted RNA to libraries. In one kit, you can process 192 samples, with each IFC processing 48 samples. So let's take a look at some of the data that's been generated using the Advana RNA-Seq NGS Library Prep Kit. 
And we start with some of our analytical validation study work that was conducted by our scientists in the lab. The objective of this internal analytical validation study was to confirm the product performance and robustness across three operators, three IFC lots, and three reagent lots, and six of the Juno instruments. We have done that type of validation because we understand that a lot of the work that takes place for library preparation is cross-operator. It's not just one operator. And also we know that different batches of IFCs will be used and different batches of reagents will be used. And we also know that for high throughput, you'll require more than one Juno system. And when you work with more than one Juno system, it means that you need to have confidence that the data is the same across platform. After processing on the Juno and using the Advana RNA-Seq NGS library prep kit, we then perform quality control across 917 samples. So we tested in this study 36 of the IFCs. So let's take a look at some of the performance results that we've been able to generate from this using universal human reference RNA, using brain RNA. And you can see that the percent reads mapped to genome are about 84% for the 10 nanograms of UHRR, 87% roughly for 100 nanograms. When we look at brain, it's 83% in 10 nanograms and 80% in 100 nanograms. And of course, you can read the rest of the table yourself. The key take homes really is that the overall percent reads mapped to the genome are 84.3%. The percents mapped to transcriptome is 72%. Very low percentage of ribosomal reads at 5.4%. Very low percent of unmapped reads at 4%. And the correlation between input amount, i.e. 10 nanogram and 100 nanogram, is really strong at 0.988. Pearson correlation of technical replicates is also really strong at 0.981. And the percent correct strandedness is also really high at 98.3%. This means that the system is generating sequencing data that you would expect to generate, high quality sequencing data. We also checked out our uniformity. And what we were able to see is that when we check this uniformity of total reads across the individual libraries, we are able to get great uniformity. We have also got no library dropout that you can observe on this. When we look at the technical reproducibility between two different operators, again, we see that we get strong correlation between operator one and operator two at 10 and 100 nanograms of the universal human reference RNA and between 10 and 100 nanograms of brain. On average, we observed more than 99% concordance supporting this fact that we have got an excellent system robustness. We also compared this to the Illumina TrueSeq kits. So far in the presentation, we always call out those kits. And so we thought it was fair to compare against that as well, at both 100 nanograms input, 10 nanograms input, and across the universal human reference RNA with ERCC spikings and brain with ERCC spikings. Each method has four replicates, and the libraries were pulled and sequenced across four lanes of a high seq 2500 and paired end at 75 base pair reads. When we look at this data, when we look at the ERCC mix one and ERCC mix two, and as if we just go back a previous slide, you can see that that really relates to the UHRR and the brain. You can see that we get a very good dynamic range. So, in other words, when you compare 10 nanograms to 100 nanograms, we get comparable spike in detection with both the Advana and the TrueSeq reagents across a broad range of expression levels. Further, when we compare the total gene detection per sample across the libraries generated with the Advana and the TrueSeq reagents, you can see again, we get very similar gene detection profiles. If you look at the graph on the left hand side, which is the universal human reference RNA, you can see in pink the Advana product and you can see in grey the TrueSeq product. 
you can see that the number of genes detected are very similar in universal human reference RNA at 10 nanograms and 100 nanograms. The same is true of brain. When you look at the brain, the Advana in purple and the TruSeq in grey, you can see at 10 nanograms and 100 nanograms that we get very comparable genes detected. When we look at the number of detected transcripts, the story is very similar. When we look at the number of detected transcripts in the universal human reference RNA at 10 nanograms and 100 nanograms, you can see very comparable data. The same is true in the brain sample. The detected transcripts per sample from universal human reference RNA and brain are comparable when studying the Advana and the TruSeq reagents. It means on the last two slides, there is no reason not to convert from the TruSeq application to the Advana RNA-Seq NGS library prep kit. And if we look at it between different kits, again, we get very good concordance with an R squared score of greater than 0.94. We appreciate that many of the different labs would have different types of sample type coming through them, especially if you're a genomics core lab. So this slide is a very nice slide to show you the effects or the, or the type of data that you can get from different sample types across different RIN scores, RNA integrity numbers. So again, although we say that we would ideally like you to have a RIN score of greater than seven, the fact is that in the real world, they're less than seven. And you can see the impacts of that. Again, please understand, we're not saying don't use that, we're just saying understand the impacts. So even if you've got a RIN score of six, you'll still get a very good number of transcripts detected and a very good number of genes detected across various different tissue types. I'd like to switch gears now to focus on a case study using this product. And the case study is the analysis of the transcriptome in hypoxic intestinal stem cells. This is work that we collaborated with, uh, with Scott Magnus at University of North Carolina. You can see an overview of Scott and his research and his work in this slide. In summary, Scott has an interest in intestinal stem cells and the genetic mechanisms that regulate them. And his lab really developed fluorescent markers, cell isolation and culture methods to study those. The work that Scott used for the Advana RNA-Seq NGS library prep kit was really to study ISCs in gene expression response to ischemia and to understand better the role played by those cells in protecting intestinal tissue from reduced oxygen levels. So the workflow that Scott adopted was really to take a device where the cells are placed in a chamber, a gas mixing chip, and study different concentrations of oxygen and how that impacts those cells. Scott was working with normoxia magnitude of between 20 and 21% and a hypoxia magnitude of 0.5%. Scott analyzed 24 samples and exposed the ISCs to hypoxic conditions for six, 24 and 48 hours. The challenge that Scott faced with traditional benchtop chemistry was that it yields very low RNA and he needs to analyze many samples and replicates. So his experimental design can be costly if he does not use a microfluidic device. So Scott was able to take the gas mixing chip and the cells that were housed in that, transfer them to the 48.atlas IFC as part of the Advana RNA-Seq NGS library prep kit workflow, and then process that on the Juno system. Once that processing was complete on the Juno system, it then goes into the Illumina sequencing platform. The sequencing data that Scott overall was able to achieve was across 24 samples with 98.5% aligning to the genome and 80.2% aligning to the transcriptome. That's very similar to our internal development data. What that means is that although we perform a lot of our internal development data on canned sample types, in the real world, we're getting the same number of reads aligning to the genome and aligning to the transcriptome. 
The overall sequencing performance metrics are shown in this table. Again, we won't go through this table in its entirety, but you can see the total number of reads per sample, the percentage of unmapped reads, very low, the percentage of reads aligned to the genome, 98.5, the transcriptome and ribosomal RNA. The take home on this slide is that these results demonstrate the high mapping statistics with very low percentage of reads derived from ribosomal sequences, ribosomal RNA sequences. The libraries prepared with the Advana RNA seq kit are shown to be highly reproducible. This is a good example of this shown in this principal component analysis plot with different time points shown in red, blue, and green, 6, 24, and 48 hours across different sample types. Hypoxic and normal are shown um, in circles and in squares. And Scott was able to understand what was happening to the gene expression during different time points, from six hours to 24 hours to 48 hours. And you can see in these volcano plots, the number of differentially expressed genes increasing with exposure to the hypoxic conditions. And Scott was able to perform some differential analysis showing the differentially expressed genes increasing over time of exposure to hypoxia, six hours, 24 hours, and 48 hours. And you can see the increase from 9% through to 32%. With that, we thank you so much for your time today, and we now will take any questions.